Hey everyone, Chloe here and welcome back to my channel. So by open poll request, you guys voted for this topic in the community tab. So this video is going to touch on a very uh, under the kitchen table, not often discussed issue, particularly in the black community, especially as it pertains to the self-esteem of women and their self-worth. And this very triggering topic is toxic motherhood. And it's a pretty taboo topic, but very necessary one when it comes to women uh, being their best and being their best in hypergamy. Because as women, our number one role model is supposed to be our mothers. As women, we are supposed to be injected with confidence and self-esteem from our mothers. And confidence and esteem are very important when it comes to having success in hypergamy. And a lot of women think, you know, that they can just slap on some wigs, wear some weave, beat their face with makeup, wear some tight dresses, wear some heels, and that by doing so, by doing these topical things, uh, it will get them chosen and flued out. But faking it until you make it can only go but for so far. And hypergamy is a little bit deeper than that because hypergamy is more than a practice. It's a mindset and a clearing out of the cobwebs, the lies, and the hot garbage that many black women are fed and conditioned to accept. So toxic motherhood is a very important subject to address, uh, especially in hypergamy, because toxic motherhood damages self-esteem, self-worth. It creates a lot of doubt in women. Uh, when you grow up with a toxic mother, you aren't as self-assured and toxic motherhood can make you feel pretty iffy about yourself and pretty unlucky. So let's get into it. Toxic motherhood. Let's talk about what it is, what it consists of, how to recognize it, how it damages and perpetuates uh, generational curses and ways to recover from it. Now, I need to say this for the people who are looking to be offended, who think I'm demonizing single mothers. Uh, this video is not about your average, uh, impoverished, frustrated, and overwhelmed single mother who is busting her behind to uh, put foot on the table and a roof over her head. This video is not for that person um, who had a super loving, awesome, caring, a doting, supportive mom or the kind of mom that you'd be willing to get hit by a bus for. This video is not for the person who had the kind of mom who considers her children the heartbeat outside of her body. This video is not for the listener who plans on buying their mom a mansion when they make it. This video is not for that kind of mom. But this video is for my listeners who have been damaged, who have been neglected, who are resentful of their mothers, who have been misinformed about their worth from their mothers. And this video is for women who have grown up with a very dysfunctional example of motherhood. And this video is for my followers who recognize that they may be at a point in their lives where they realize that they have to repair a lot of damage. Now, everyone who has experienced uh, toxicity with their mothers has a different story. Sometimes the damage uh, that is done is mild. Sometimes uh, the damage is moderate. And sometimes the damage is on a Yala, uh, Iyanla Fix My Life PSTD level. So toxic motherhood in a nutshell is a mother, a stepmother, uh, a grandmother, an auntie, or a primary caregiver who essentially does a very poor job at parenting. Uh, some toxic mothers are controlling. Some toxic mothers can be berating and hypercritical. Some tox toxic mothers can be envious and jealous. Some toxic mothers compete with their daughters. Some toxic mothers work overtime to chop the tree of your self-esteem down. Some toxic mothers will hurt your feelings and be unapologetic about it. Now. I am well aware that calling out women for being bad mothers is considered uh, blasphemous and sacrilegious in our society, but poor mothering is a real thing that affects millions of lives, both men and women. With toxic motherhood, children are the victims. With, to with toxic motherhood, children are uh, mishandled. With toxic motherhood, children are neglected. So the signs of toxic motherhood are often uh, physical abuse, severe emotional and physical neglect, uh, lack of affection and affirmation, which are the building blocks of high self-esteem and worth. And with 
toxic motherhood often comes a lot of normalized dysfunction as well as possible high levels of narcissism and mental abuse. Now, when we are children, children do not have the tools to mentally process the experience of abuse for the most part. Children do what they are told to survive because children are well aware of how dependent they are on the adults who are around them. And that is why children are sponges. They absorb whatever the emotional environment supplies, you know, whether good or bad. Children see their caregivers or their parents or their mothers as their, for, as their first point of contact with God. Parents to children are literally God. But the problem and the problems that often arise in toxic motherhood is that children tend to absorb a lot of negativity and false beliefs about themselves. And absor absorption leads to parental damage. And that is why toxicity is passed down from one generation to the next and to the next until it becomes a generational curse. With toxic motherhood, many mothers and many women for the most part lack uh, the essential required tools of successful mothering and successful parenting. Tools such as self-love, self-confidence, self-worth, high self-esteem, passing on the feminine principle to their daughters, and men as fathers passing on the masculine principle to their sons. In toxic parenting, tools are missing, such as emotional support, emotional connection, and validation. Children need to be validated. When children are raised by mothers who lack these tools and the basic principles of successful parenting, uh, sometimes the roles are reversed with children. Uh, there are toxic situations where the parent becomes the child and the children become the parents. It's called parentification. Google it. And it's a very serious form of abuse. Some toxic mothers are as mean as a uh, junkyard dog. Some toxic mothers are uh, addicted to making uh, bad decisions, poor decisions. And the results of toxic parenting can be pretty corrosive and disastrous um, uh, to your self-esteem because there is nothing more uh, sadder than a child who is broken and shattered by the very people who are supposed to be responsible and accountable for their well-being. This is sad stuff we're talking about here. And it happens every day because that broken child uh, eventually grows into a broken adult. Uh, why do you think so many black men and black women to a certain degree hate women, you know? And so many black people don't like themselves. More than likely, they had a toxic mother. And this is why you should avoid these types of men at all costs, men who have been abused and neglected by their own toxic mothers. Now, because mothers, uh, especially in the black community, are the primary caregivers uh, of children, notice I say primary caregivers, when it comes to talking about abuse and neglect, when it comes to black mothers and talking about black mothers, according to Nicolations chapter 13, verse 4, us black folk tend to lump all black mothers together. And we treat uh, black mothers as demigods in the community and as women who can do no wrong. When the truth is, and some of you may not want to hear this, uh, black mothers can do a whole lot of wrong, right? And a whole lot of damage and, and can perpetuate a whole lot of dysfunction. A lot of black women mistreat their children uh, as quiet as kept. And this is why when you're dating someone, ladies, don't ask your man if he loves his mother. That is a rookie question. Ask him, how did his mother treat him growing up? This is the answer that will tell you everything that you need to know about how that man truly feels about women. Because when a man hates his mother, because his mother abused him and neglected him, if he doesn't seek help, and most men do not seek help for their issues, he will make every woman that comes into his life pay for the sins of mommy dearest. Uh, but we have a powerful, nar uh, powerful narrative in the black community. And that narrative is that we should love, appreciate, hold in high esteem, respect, and honor our mothers no matter what they've done because they're doing the best that they can. And this is a very broad paintbrush that is used in the black community. And it's a convenient narrative that a lot of damaging toxic mothers tend to hide behind. Now, many of you are wondering, well, 
what does that have to do with me? What does that have to do with hypergamy and femininity? And to that, I say a whole lot. You know, if your mother didn't hug you or show you affection or she physically abused you or your mother had a mental disorder such as narcissism or your mother struggled with addiction or maybe you simply grew up with a masculine mother who never taught her daughter about femininity or about being a wife or a stay-at-home mom or about being married to a man of means or being married to a provider and protector, it is no secret that black mothers of a certain age are simply not aware of hypergamy. So generation wise, a huge ball has been dropped, which is why you need to subscribe to this channel. But for mothers to encourage them, the idea to their daughters that a woman can be married to someone that she respects and admires uh, and married to a, a man who can provide and protect is an idea that has never been encouraged with black women or even exposed to black women as an option. There are young women today who don't even know what the word hypergamy even means. And the more of a toxic mother you've had, the less likely you are to see the infinite possibilities of your life. Toxic motherhood can uh, kind of take a huge dump on that. A lot of women who have had toxic mothers do not want children and do not like children because of their own uh, traumatizing experiences with their own mothers. Now, obviously as a disclaimer, this is just a YouTube video and I am not a licensed uh, therapist or a licensed psychologist, but as a suggestion, I am certainly all for women and the men who are listening to seek professional help, especially when your mental health and your happiness have been severely compromised by a toxic mother. And I want my followers and my listeners to understand that you are not alone with this issue. There are hundreds of thousands of women to the millions, right, who are affected every day by toxic mothers. It's just unfortunate that many of these men and women do not seek the help that they need and they suffer a great deal because of it. I also want to remind uh, my followers that practicing hypergamy is not only about getting a man with money or the window dressing of hypergamy. Hypergamy is not a, a solution or a band-aid for the broken little girl or the broken little boy inside of you, which is why I made a video on that. Healing that little girl and her broken, shattered heart takes a tremendous amount of work that no man uh, uh, or no love on earth can fix. Only you can fix it. But that work and that healing that comes with the uh, that comes with it comes with huge uh, dividends and an even bigger payoff. So that when you do meet that man of means or that provider and that protector, you will truly feel worthy of it. So that's all I have to say on this for now. Toxic mothers are realer than real and toxic mothers believe that they are owed and that you owe them your life and they can cause a lot of damage, uh, sometimes quiet damage, sometimes loud damage, but damage nevertheless. So let me know what your thoughts are on this video and I will catch up with you in the next one.